Shalom, sweet pea, and how are you? Uh, it's right now about uh, 5.13 in the morning, and uh, uh, this here is the uh, second video that I'd like to uh, present to you to show you that you're already full of faith. I mean, you'll feel it, you know, you'll feel the words that are coming forth, and, you know, they're quite amazing. I mean, I the last video I did I was quite pleased that we did that little Bible study together and uh, this one here is going to be great too uh, everyone that's tuning in uh, what we're going to be discussing here is uh, about this here leper and uh, he goes to a prophet to be healed so what I'm wanting to do is uh, to help build the faith in everybody I mean I'll tell you what, if you eat sauerkraut every day, okay, and I'll say that before we say the prayer, but if you eat sauerkraut every day, there's uh, on YouTube, you can go ahead and take a look, there's all kinds of recipes for it, uh, but all you got to do is take cabbage and slice it and put it about an inch thick, and you can take like... Uh, uh, my bride's going to try both of them. She's going to go ahead and uh, use Himalayan salt in one batch and uh, the uh, canning and pickling salt in the other. And I haven't tried it with the uh, Himalayan salt. And I, I told her I, I don't know if it'll make it mushy or not. But she, you know, wants to give it a try. And I don't know, you know, I don't know what it would do. But what you do is you put layers of cabbage with salt, a little bit of salt, okay? And you let it set for about 15 minutes or so, and then you just take all your anger out on it. And you beat it, you know, and you squish it and mush it and mush it and mush it, you know, with your hands. You want to release, you know, all the tension and, and with love you want to put it right on in that sauerkraut because you want the best bacteria you can get. So you want to put love into the food that you're going to make for your holy temple okay now once it's you know with juice and it's pretty well can cover itself in a jar and it depends on how much you make you know quart jar half gallon gallon uh, fill it up to where it's about that far from the lip okay and take a if it's quart jar you could take a, a sandwich baggie and put it down inside the mouth and fill that with water and then when it gets up to the lip you know about even and you can see that it made a seal all the way around there just you know close off the uh, zip thing and don't leave a lot of water just enough you know to keep it so it sits put it in a bowl put it on your counter and let it ferment for three days all right now if you do this and you start eating the sauerkraut every morning now there's another thing that you need to do too and that's to get yourself some uh, fresh garlic you want to get a few globes of it not cloves the single thing you wanna you want a couple globes and peel it beat it up a bit you know cutter you can chop it you can mulch it whatever you want and let it set for about a half an hour don't make a big mound try to spread it out a little bit so that uh, the allicin in there will start growing and the allicin is kind of like if you cut yourself and you get a scab well it's a bruising kind of agent and it just does miracles for you uh, take garlic and then what you want to do is make sure you got some raw honey you got to be careful you're not getting the uh, uh, fructose corn syrups or whatever else disguised as honey uh, you want to make sure it's nice and raw in about equal parts of a raw organic vinegar you could put that in mix it all together and there's other things you could put in there you know you should put in like uh, curcumin which is excellent for the heart the circulatory system those sorts of things and always when you take curcumin you want to also put in black pepper now if you got a cold that's starting or even a flu what you want to do is take yourself a couple tablespoons or at least a couple teaspoons of black pepper 
ground black pepper and you would be amazed what that little plant will do for you uh, it'll help you it will knock her right out boy every now and then you should put a lot of you know I like to do it in my mashed potatoes you know I'll take a section and I'll put a bunch of uh, black pepper in there but you always want to take your curcumin curcumin it's a part of turmeric that root that wonderful root that down there in uh, uh, Trinidad West embargo they had done a study they've got primarily 50 50 percent you got 50 percent Indian and 50 percent black population well in the black population they've got AIDS and other things that run rampant where in the Indian population and even though they associate with each other and such they didn't have these problems and what they boiled it down to I once wrote a book about it you know mad cow disease and I think I I sold five copies of it I think I did it could have been four but I'm thinking it was five but anyway it shows that turmeric was part of the curry you know that they used in the Indian tradition meals so from the curry there's the turmeric in there that's the probably the most medicinal uh, coriander seeds really great you know for various things but the curcumin is a extract from the turmeric and, and it's really great on the heart uh, circulatory system digestive system it, it's great for everything actually you know and uh, a lot of times you'll see you know when they are looking under slides and microscopes they have to dye something and when they dye it it kills it well when you touch curcumin you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because your fingers will be orange man it takes you got to get it off quick or else it'll really stain and it looks pretty bad uh, get it on your countertop it's bad but you want to always use black pepper with curcumin it's a must now the sauerkraut what you want to do after you take you know you can mix the curcumin and the the black pepper that's what I do and I put it in right there with my uh, minced garlic the honey and vinegar mixture and uh, then the curcumin and the black pepper and I just shake it up in the morning first thing on an empty stomach and take about a tablespoon I mean you'll know what you want your body will let you know and it, and it doesn't really make you stinky because the honey and the vinegar does things to it that people won't really notice it, it it's at first yes but then after from my experience I haven't really smelt it you know but uh, I guess I was the only one around but if I, I asked this is you smell garlic and they said no so anyway if you took a tablespoon of that on an empty stomach every morning and you'll feel the first time you know I mean because you just made the stuff it's gonna be a little rough but let it burn just a little bit and wash down some water and don't eat for like about 15 minutes then after that you can eat or whatever else but what you want to eat first is about two or three forkfuls of your homemade sauerkraut you can also make like pickles and and well not pickles see pickle is basically something that you would use a vinegar in but what you want to do is you want to brine your pickles and that's making it with salt water uh, nice salt water and you can use sea salt uh, Himalaya salt I'm I suppose but even for those I've used the canning and pickling salt primarily because I was brought up on it and it doesn't have the things off oh, you're you're eating table salt get rid of it guys okay it's got chemicals in there so when you eat it it doesn't dissolve and get into your cells oh man look at me here I am but anyway if you do that with sauerkraut and you eat it during the day is snacks every day every day for two weeks it'll get rid of your cancers and all sorts of stuff but they don't want to tell you these things and of course with your garlic mixture as well and 
And if you got problems with asthma, there's a uh, brown seaweed that's found above uh, Japan and below North Korea out there. And it's a brown seaweed. It's called the Colonia Kappa and they make an extract of it. I think Swanson's uh, sell some. I mean, I had bought pounds of that, or kilos, I should say, and I was using it with miraculous results with asthma people and such. I just about a, oh, maybe just about an eighth of a teaspoon of it I was using, and it pretty much healed my lungs. And I usually use that in the morning uh, as well as other things. I don't still take my uh, garlic because I'm feeling really well. If I go outside uh, to town or something, oh yeah, I'll take me my tablespoon. So when I'm out there, all that allicin and everything's going to protect me, keep me from these fevers and flus and, and colds and everything else. All right, but anyway, we're going to talk about this here... Uh, uh, he's a leper, but we've got to pray. I promised my queen that when we begin these, now I've explained these things, you know, that we're going to get into is building faith. So I can put away my little uh, non-stickable there. And uh, dear, if you'd like, you can put her on pause right now. Oh, Father Yahweh, we call upon your strength. We call upon your arm. We call upon your shield and your powers. Your sword of truth. Your high priest, our brother and king, Yahshua. And I pray that you do hear us, Yahshua. And all those that are listening in, I pray that if they are real, that you will open their minds to see that if they will keep your laws and your commandments and humble themselves, if they'll humble themselves and pray, and I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm praying, and if you're agreeing with me out there, anyone other than my bride, and that's why I'm praying, then you'll have more than two. And we're two or more gathered, our king will be there. He is there. He, this, these videos, I pray, the Holy Spirit will impregnate them. And that those that listen, that they may hear, that it's not going to be all, you know, we're not going to always have these love letters available because one day my bride, Yahshua, you're going to bring to me. And I know this, and she knows that, but it's just not time now. It's, it'll be your time. And when this does take place, I'll be teaching my bride where we will be. You know, protected place, wherever it'll be. I just pray that you will protect us until that time. I pray you open the ears and the eyes and the hearts of those that are watching these here videos. That they may learn and understand that you do have power. <laughs> you know, it's... It's, men try to take too much credit, where they have no credit at all. Everything you knew, Father, you foretold it in the prophecies. You foretold of the 144,000. You foretold of the prophets and, and even our king. And if, he, and if he wasn't nailed to a tree and raised up on a pole, yeah, sure, you're going to show these things to the whole world. You already did, but they can't see it. And I pray you'll open their eyes to, to where they can see that you, you gave the sign. You know, that it was you, that you had to be raised up on a pole, just like with Moshe in the wilderness. You know, that's how you had to be done. And people want to put you on a cross. I pray that they'll beg forgiveness and I pray they'll come to understanding and that they'll really listen to the words in this video because they're much more than words they're infused with the Holy Spirit that you want to give everyone if they just be like my bride oh I pray that you'll heal this woman Yeshua and I know you're going to I mean there's no doubt but I do ask that you know by the end of this video that I may command the pain to cease and that you will 
allow this for her. We know the damages and everything else that that's going to take place later. But I do pray, Yahshua, that you'll be kind to my bride. You gave her to me. And I gotta ask, and I'm asking in front of everyone. I'm asking in front of Father Yahweh and everybody. You know, and I know you'll do this because you love me. And, and well, you're not even gonna do it because you love me. You're gonna do it for your name's sake, and that's all we can ask. But I do want to thank you, Yahshua. And please tell Father Yahweh that we love him and that we're thinking about him. And we sure appreciate him giving us to you. It would really be great. It would mean a lot. And I pray that the courts of heaven will be open to all those who have complaints. All those that are... Without justice, we pray that we cry out, as Enoch told us to do, and we cry out for justice and judgment to come, yours, not man's. <laughs> and may you be with us. And we praise your holy name, Father Yahweh, through your righteous Son, who is a totally different and separate being than you, and that's why we love you twice as much as those in the world. You know, they're, they're just loving one. <laughs> and the Trinity kind of thing in one. I don't understand it, but I do understand you, Father Yahweh, a whole lot better than I did when I first woke up. And Yahshua, thank you for guiding us. And I pray that you'll guide these words that everyone will be able to see and that they'll be able to have faith grow in them. And, of course, it's the first type faith for most people. For my bride, this is the... Uh, the upper it's kind of like you know the lesser baptism to the greater well this is what most people out there have isn't the faith that my bride has because she was given to our king and it says there i think it's in yakinon chapter 8 i'm not going to it you know but it talks about how the schoolmaster brings you to the father how does it bring you to the Father? It shows you how to honor the Father. So then when you honor the Father, He gives you to the Son because He knows you can honor then the Son because the Son taught the very same thing as the Father. And then once you get to the Son, you don't even need the schoolmaster because you love the law. See, that's where Romans 7 verse 14 comes in. Okay, for uh, uh, for the spirit is, the law is the spirit. Uh, oh, I've got to look at that now. Romans 7 14. I'm bringing it up, but anyway, this, it's about the spirit of the law. Go to Romans here. Sorry about this, dear. It's already longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought I'd get in there talk about this leper. We'd be gone, but no, we've got to discuss all these other things because Al can't keep his mind focused. There we are. Romans 7.14 For we know that the law is spiritual so when you keep the law you get this Holy Spirit and when you have Holy Spirit you can move mountains okay and, and when you've got somebody that can agree with you a wife especially if you've got one that you're at one with and you can agree with her and she can agree with you and everything and I'll tell you what we've got Satan and and she's throwing these ping pong balls at me man ping 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 all day long just nailing me I mean it's it's one thing after the other trying to suck my joy away from me from this woman and and you know I'm walking along it's like you know patink it hits me in the head and I'm looking at her <laughs> I mean, I sit here in the desk, and I've got her picture up in the computer, so I've got company, you know. I mean, I know that she's already in my heart, the same as our king and our father is, but i got someone to take a look at and, and enjoy my meal with, you know. So she really means a lot to me in so many different ways. And believe you me, a long-distance relationship, you know, they work. They really do, because you can learn a lot about nothing. 
I mean, <laughs> I still don't know nothing about you except that your, you know, your spirit and your soul was all I ever wanted. Anyway, you've been hurting, and you know, at the end of this, I'm going to do a little command for you, so I want you to pay attention. And this here's uh, 2 Kings 5, verse 1, and that's where we're going to start, and I'll read down through here a bit. Just so you could hear my soothing voice and, and understand the circumstances. We want the subject matter to be covered so, so we don't leave no loopholes. 2 Kings 5.1 Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him Yahweh had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to the mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who was from the land of Israel. 2 Kings 5.5 5. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Alright, now a talent, a lot of people don't understand what this talent is. So I'm, I, I, gotta, I gotta clarify this here, okay, because our king talks about one guy gets a talent, another guy gets five talents, another guy gets ten talents. Well, believe you me, you know, I never did get that. A talent sounds pretty small, you know. You could probably, you know, sounds like something like this, you know, or or whatever to the normal reader. So I want you to broaden your horizons a little bit. See, a talent is also the size of the hailstones that are soon to come falling from these freaky clouds. They're going to weigh a talent, about a talent. It's about a hundred pounds. <laughs> so, you know, when you got a hundred pounds of silver, that's a talent. And this guy's got like six talents. Uh, with him, ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels, and so on and so forth. And then he's got gold and changes the clothing. See, clothing was very valuable back then. Most people didn't even have, you know, a robe. I mean, there's scripture that says if you see someone naked, you know, and you got a robe, give it to them. <laughs> it wasn't uncommon for people to be naked. Isaiah walked around for three years preaching butt naked at his bootock hanging right out, and he's praise Yahweh with everything. You know, I mean, he put his all into it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just really glad that we've got more clothes in these last days. Hard for me to keep hold of them. They keep burning them up on me, but I, I still do have some, and I'm wearing them. So anyway, they had ten changes of clothing. And that was right next to the shekels of gold. <laughs> so they were valuable. Then he brought the letter to the... Uh, this is uh, 2 Kings 5.6. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it, occur and it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I Yahweh to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when 
Elisha, the man of Yahweh, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes. Clothes are very expensive now, remember. And the king just tore them. That he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the, the, the yard, the Jordan, seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. Alright, well you got this valiant guy, man. He's a leper. Just kicked the hell out of some army guys, you know. And and now he's got this leprosy and he's going down here to Elisha. And Elisha knew he's coming, sent a servant, said, Hey man, go jump in the freaking lake, you know. <laughs> jump in the Jordan here, you know, seven times. Just Alright, so you you now there was another time there's this king. And he started getting these real bad boils, and he only had a short time to live. But the man repented, okay? And the prophets told, was told to make poultices out of figs and save the king's life. And he actually had a bunch of years added on to his life because of his obedience. He put... You know, figs on himself, you know, and here they got this guy wanting to jump in the lake. <laughs> he's going to jump in the lake here seven times. That's all he's got to do here. I mean, it's simple, sounds simple to me, you know, put a, a fig poultice. Uh, Yahshua, you know, he healed this one fella, and he said, uh, go to the uh, pool of uh, Shalomi there and, and wash your face. You know, so that guy, you know, Yahshua spit on, you know. I mean, he spit on it and rubbed the mud, but there was some kind of chemical reaction that took place. There might have been a mineral or something in there, too, that, you know, could have been absorbed that helped Yahshua do it. I mean, Yahshua was led to pick up the dirt or spit on the ground, it says. And I like the way that the uh, the gospel of john or the book of john movie you can watch on youtube it shows that our messiah picked it up in his hand went <laughs> okay and then he wipes it on this guy's eyes and it's just so real i mean it's an unbelievable movie and you should consider watching these on the sabbath but you know that was another thing it was just sometimes you got to do some certain things to certain individuals to allow them to heal okay I mean and, and that's why I've, I'm kind of putting this on my my bride I'm going you know I've already let her know she needs to do the sauerkraut and I'm gonna put a certain amount of days on there when we figure out when she's gonna be able to do everything and get the colon cleanse all these kind of things done uh, so that she can have the full healing but until then, we're just going to get rid of the pain. I, I've asked Yahshua, you know, and I've got no doubt in the world, you know, that when I command this, you know, she's going to feel better. It might not take all the pain away. It's all on her face, okay? So, but doing this, I know that when she feels the pain actually goes, she's going to have no doubt anymore in these things you know like I say she's already full and these things are just gonna make her joyous and and tingle all over and say wow what a rush man these words are just killer <laughs> so anyway you got this guy and he's uh, uh, now be advised when this letter comes to you that I'll have sent Naaman and so on and so forth and uh, talks about him doing his clothes uh, Naaman went with his horses and the chariots, okay, in verse 10, 2 Kings 5, 10. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan, the Yarden, seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. 
So and certainly Naaman would say, well, well, okay, sounds great to me. Ah, uh uh Levin. But Naaman, na, 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 it's N-A-A-M-A-N. And I don't know what I'm doing with that word. I've been up a whole long time here, and it's, it's pronounced different every time, I think. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on me in the name of the God, the Lord, his God, or whatever God he calls on here, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. It's a hika waka look -a waka you know? Some preacher out there slapping people, you know, and you got those demons jumping out, because that's what this here name and is used to you know, people doing these kind of things. He just wasn't able to be healed. That was an example he was talking about, what he expected a man of Yahweh to do. But he didn't really know it was a man of Yahweh. It was a man of some other God that he didn't worship. And where they worshiped, they did these, you know, waving the hands over the, you know, and and the craziness that goes on out here today because the demons love that anyway they they love to put on theatrical acts entertain people make you think that you can live forever no matter how wicked you are and whether you keep the laws or not don't matter is what they're trying to teach you which is neither here nor there because we're talking about this faith this guy's pissed off he's like what didn't wave his hand over me or nothing man Wants me jump in the lake. Are ye, oh, this is verse 12, are ye not the Abana and the Farapar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. <laughs> he was a he was a pretty valiant man from what it was talking about, and he's like pretty pissed off right now, I'd have to say. And his servants, uh, verse 13, And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he says to you, wash and be clean you know and I guess name and he, he might have been in love before too because I tell you what he listened to the guy <laughs> you know and the bride that I have I mean she talks to me man and she broke all my walls and everything with just a couple words just come I mean what that fellow said would have took me about 1500 words and she could condense it down, probably even a couple less than what he said, to get the point across. And a servant came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you, if the prophet had commanded you, told, commanded, ordered, <laughs> compelled, with uh, superiority, of course, added to it. You'd have to, it's a command. Okay, now, if he had commanded you to do something great, would you not have done it? If he told you, go on out in the yard and uh, hmm, break your sword in half, and kill two she-bears, man, you know, and bring the hide to me. Well, first off, you would have known that that wasn't a prophet. Because a prophet isn't going to want, you know, an unclean hide. And he wouldn't want someone to be getting all unclean from killing an unclean animal. They should just leave him alone. Uh, so, Naaman, you know... He could have done any mighty feat. Climbed a mountain, jumped a river with a single bound. When I was a kid, man, 
I mean, my mom, you know, bless her heart, she's a witness. I mean, I jumped over a toy doll house with a single bound. I did. I, hey, I'm trying. I know this really sounds far-fetched, but you know, it's true. And I did it many times, many times. And, you know, I, the only thing that made me quit, you know, was... You know, I got to being 18 and my mom stopped coming in, you know, and, you know, applauding or anything. So it really didn't seem like it makes, <laughs> makes much sense, you know. So, but yeah, I can jump over a toy dollhouse with a single bound and maybe name and could have done that too, you know. Or wrestle the alligator or something, a crocodile. You wrestle a crocodile. Uh do some mighty feat and then all of a sudden you know wave a hand over him and then he'd be healed you know he could do that kind of stuff he's figuring yeah I, I could whoop some ass you know if I need to I, I can I could take on 12 Philistines easily you know send me 15 I'll do that my father if the prophet had told you to do something great would you not have done it how much more then? When he says to you, mm, you know, like, wash and be healed, which is a commandment. It didn't say, please wash. It didn't say, could you wash? May I wash? May he wash? May she wash? It didn't say any of this. It was a direct command. <laughs> wash and be clean is what the man is saying there you know that's all you have to do jump in the damn lake seven times <laughs> and you'll be clean of leprosy just jump in the damn lake will you obey it's all you have to do if you are weak on faith simply obey <laughs> and you can be healed you certainly can so if I tell you to eat sauerkraut, you're going to eat sauerkraut, dear. Yes, and you're going to like it, and I'm going to love you for it. And you're going to love me for it, too, because you're going to see a big change in you. Your guts are going to come alive, and your guts and, you know, your uh, immune system. And when you get that thing going on the right track... It's going to help heal your body, but we got to get we got to get you lubed so that you can be you know primed with the Holy Spirit to no problem whatsoever. Okay, I've already told you to eat the sauerkraut and stuff, and then once you get hands laid on you by the prayer cloth that I will send you for your baptism, it's going to be also for healing. It's for laying out of hands for the Holy Spirit and for your healing for everything I mean you're going to come out of that uh, watery grave a perfect temple so that you won't have no more pain but you're gonna have your pain reduced here and I'm sorry I'm making you wait on that but I, I want you to see that I can't do this for you I mean, not unless I had you jump up and down three times first or something. And I don't want you doing that, causing any more damage, you know. And, you know, who knows? You might lose balance or something from where, you know, you got that, uh, you know, who knows. So, anyway, this guy's told, you know, why not do it? In name, and he figures, hmm, you know, it, it might... It might make sense. Maybe I should. So he went down and dipped seven times. This is verse 14 of 2 Kings 5. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of Yahweh. And his flesh was restored, like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean my love and my life my queen my wish is your command but please do consider just a little bit that the name amen he was a mighty man from some other place 
he was of the heathen nations or whatever. But he had a great reputation, and he kind of like, come on in. You know, I don't know the whole guy's history, but he wasn't keeping the laws nor the commandments. But there was an exception made because there was a king from this other kingdom asking this king, and then Elijah intervened and put a stipulation on there. He says, okay, if you want to be healed. See, I don't have to do that. I could lay hands on you, my dear. And, but the thing is, I'm not near you. And that's too bad. But I hate it. And that's too bad. Because I'm cute. Okay, that's what I am. I'm, I'm pretty cute. I'm working at that. Yeah. Almost average. I'm cute. I notice my hairline's a little different on each side. But, you know, that's okay. You know, you don't want your whole army retreat at the same time there, you know, you want, I mean, when it retreats, you know, you want to keep a balance, so that's how that works. Anyway, this guy, he's in there, and he, he jumps in the lake seven times, and he comes out, and uh, he just according to the saying of the man of Yahweh, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean and he was a Gentile and he came in and the prophet just told him jump in the river seven times and the man was healed and you're a daughter of Father Yahweh my love you know and I'm sitting here trying to teach you faith when you man I don't understand this but I love you enough that I'm gonna try I'm gonna try I know, if you if you pointed your finger and told the mountain and you looked with those eyes, you know, and lightning bolts come out and, you know, there ain't nothing left of the mountain. I don't know if it moved or not, but there, it'd just be gone. And that's the power you're going to get. I know, it's on its way. And you've already got it in you. I mean, you can see this. It's, it's plain as day. And I had to stay up for you, okay, because... Oh, like I said, I uh, the email you sent me, okay, after uh, you thought I had gone to bed after we, we prayed, because I've been up for a couple of days already, well, you know, after the phone call and I found out that you had pain, I couldn't go to sleep, so not until I could do something about the pain, and I had to do some praying, and I did that first video, you know, and... It's like, you know, Yahshua, I still can't sleep, man. It's It's got to, she's got to get rid of the pain, okay? I know that these other things got to be documented, you know, so that our king may be glorified and honored. But, darling, I mean, uh, do, do you want to get baptized? Would that make you have faith if you was to, like, baptize yourself seven times under my instruction on the phone? <laughs> Yeah. Or would it simply be easier to eat some sauerkraut and then, uh, you know, know that when your holy temple is cleansed and you become baptized, that Holy Spirit's going to come onto you and, and very few people. And you do have a little Holy Spirit, dear. And that's what amazes me because when you get a better portion, wow. She. <laughs> But, you know, there are tests that come with that, too. But I think you're you're quite powerful, and if you have a real problem, you'll let me know. And, you know, these things, you know, like the Deuteronomy 28 ordeal there, where I'm doing a, a Bible study on it, and you wake up at the same time and, and do a study on Deuteronomy 28. And I, I, don't, I didn't tell my lady about this gentleman and young lady. I didn't, we didn't discuss this, it wasn't, a, this was just something I decided to do, as I said, you know, I don't have any questions, so let me do a teaching on Deuteronomy chapter 28, or a reading on it mostly, and, you know, a little teaching before, and then I'll do a little uh, teaching on Isaiah 24, because it was way shorter, so I could do in less time you know, pick through the scriptures and explain it. And I think it worked out pretty well. But I was doing those ones, and I don't even know why I'm talking right now. <laughs> I'm in love. But anyway, it's to do with the faith, okay? You've, 
dear, you know, our king. You're in his hands, and he gave you to me. I mean, if he didn't have faith in you, <laughs> he certainly wouldn't have gave you to me. Is it clicking? I hope so, because, darling, you know, I mean, I'm going to tell you here in a couple minutes, but, but you got to realize that, I mean, if it would make you feel better when I command you, you know, if you want, you could pick up a spoon and tap it on your forehead 12 times or something, you know, and uh, if you'd like me to tell you that, I can do that, but I don't have that need because you and I am one and you feel it. You know that what I'm telling you is truth. I mean, what did you tell me when I was broken completely? squabbling on the floor as sawdust and our king started putting us back together again. That's about a week ago, wasn't it? I hit the rock bottom of everything and I gave up faith in everything and I was going for my sinless life and the first thing I grab is the Holy Scriptures to go stop eating and, and end it all because my beautiful bride was taken from me from what I was told and it was a bad battle bad bad battle but I got great faith now way better than before because I found out before that I didn't really have the faith and in fact my dear it, it seems as though you and I may have been and I thought it was given before but we may have been given to the king you know at the same time and the king just gave us to each other you know because I went through that horrible ordeal and my entire id you know my, my psyche my my every fiber it was like my molecules just disintegrated and came apart and flew away like some Martian hit me with his ray gun or something. And I just, whoop. I mean, that's what I was turned into. And I found out that I was not who I thought I was at all. I was what everybody else thought it was because I thought that's what I had to be. <laughs> it's the only way not to get kicked in the shins by pretty girls or, you know, called names and, and run down by anybody else. So, you know, these kind of things uh, took place. Oh man, now I lost my place again. I can't believe it. We're talking about this wonderful faith. Oh man. But it's okay. You understand what I'm talking about. And she does this to me, you know. And one of these days she's going to be with me. My bride is going to be there, aren't you, pumpkin? You're going to be by my side. But you've got the strength right now that you know you're doing your work and you're going to do a great work here shortly so you got to just stop thinking that you can do anything about your faith uh, you've got it it's it's not something you can even lose you can lose your faith dear as easy as i can go eat a ham sandwich okay it's not going to take place your faith was great enough to come and give yourself to me. And I'm so broken, man. I didn't do anything. You picked me up, put me in this thing, you know, shook it a bit. and You and Yahshua has been doing your thing with me ever since. And I think I've grown quite a bit, you know. And I know that it's going to be a lot bigger that we're going to be growing because people's going to hear our words and they're not going to follow and worship us you know forget that i'm going to be busy worshiping you my dear i'm not looking for no big congregation i'm not looking for your donation i'm going to have to listen to that one again that sounded pretty cool now there was a spot in the last video that i I listened to and I couldn't find it again after and I really felt bad about because I it felt like I said something bad about my wife and I was pissed at me boy I'll tell you and I, I rewound it and I couldn't find it and so I don't know if you know it's just that uh, little critters are messing with me or if they got some kind of ion cannon and it just zolted me for a second but they can't defeat me they can't defeat my wife 
They can't defeat the body of Messiah. No, they can't do that. They can make war with us, <laughs> you know. And maybe some might have to, but it's a protected place coming up. And anyway, you got this non-believer. All he had to do was jump in a river seven times. There's nothing you got to do, dear. You know, except to get, you know, you want to get baptized. So you made that decision yourself. I presented facts, and you're a smart cookie. And and now you want to be in our king. Completely. Well, the only way to do that is through this baptism, because that other the other preacher, he didn't have what the 144,000 have. It's a totally different baptism. And you saw that, and I'm like, wow, that is so great. And one, but we've got to do this clean out thing. We want to make sure that you are as pure as can be when you get washed in our king's blood. And that's what's going to take place when you get baptized. You'll be completely clean. <laughs> and if that don't give you some faith, to where you're completely healed. I don't know what will, because, you know, you're going to be eating the sauerkraut. And if you do what I tell you, you're going to be healed anyway. This guy, man, he jumped in a damn river seven times. I'm not telling you to jump in a river. But when you get the sauerkraut made, I'm going to tell you how many times to eat that and for how many days. Okay? And you're going to do it. Just like it said, wash and be clean. Eat sauerkraut like I said. <laughs> and I don't like doing this to you, darling. You know that. But, you know, this has got to be done. I've got to be firm with you. i got to command you to do this. <laughs> and you'll be healed either way. I mean, it's a fail-safe. Either you're going to end up better than this non-believer they came and got healed from jumping in the river seven times and instead all you're gonna have to do is eat sauerkraut because you know who I am <laughs> I'm the man that Yahshua told you to give yourself to because you were my gift and you had to tell me who I was, you know, but now I know Yahshua has no longer got me as his jester it's a different ball game now, dear. See, you know, I, I got iron clad, I got these iron clad nuts now, I guess, or something, because I've been getting kicked all day long, and it's like, psh, I love Amy, man, and Yahshua, I pray you watch over, you know, let all her attacks come on me, you know, I'm fine with this, you know, just uh, everything breaking down and this and that, don't bother me. I, I'm not going to need it again until I have to use it, you know, so hopefully maybe it'll get fixed by then or this and that and, you know, they're just distractions and the distractions are so I can't bring these videos to you. And I see that. I see it perfectly. And it's not going to work. I love you too much, you know, but after this one, I don't know. I can't promise you. I cannot promise you that I won't make another. But after this video, you're not going to have the pain. Okay, and uh, hopefully, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be as far as you're going to want it to go, dear. I ask for the pain, but if you want, and I'm going to give you full access to our king here in a minute, because I'm going to command you, and I'm going to command you in the name of our king. And if you love him and you want to fall into his arms and kiss his feet, you damn well better listen to him, okay? So, you know, I don't know what to say. You slap your head in the, you know, with a spoon six times or just love me enough to, to obey me in this. I am not asking you to obey me in anything except this. <laughs> I don't want your obedience. I don't, I don't, I'm not worthy of it. You're obedient to our king. As long as you're obedient to him, then we're never going to have a problem. And people can't see that, you know. I mean, you and I can see this, and our families think we're nuts. <laughs> because we love the same dead guy. But, you know, they'll wake up someday, hopefully. Maybe they'll watch one of these videos and say, Wow, man, that guy gets pretty weird when he ain't slept in four days. <laughs> 
Well, sometimes the Spirit works best in me at these times, and I've had this problem all my life. And I once in one video was speaking about, you know, if you did the math of a normal man who slept eight hours a day by the time he's like 90 is about where I am right now in this 59-year-old body because there's times I gone months without a snooze and all that time I was studying and working and such so all the eight hours that that 80 year old man had lost because of sleep I didn't I didn't have much and when I did sleep back then it was only maybe a few hours or so and and I might be up for another week <laughs> I couldn't sleep and I studied and then I got disabled so what did I have to do I, I studied I studied for you all. I studied for my bride. You know, and after uh, my bride, you know, when every Yahshua's will is, you know, his desire for us. I mean, she, she brings me more than enough love. I mean, the you can't, you know, describe really the, uh, the feeling of flying before the throne. It's It's... I'm going to tell you, it's greater than sex, you know, from what I remember. I think I had that a couple times, but, you know, and it sure didn't feel like this. Uh, maybe it was just my bride, but I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling that it was, you know, a little of everything, and I had a taste of heaven. I really did. I, whew, it was beautiful. And this woman can pray, man. That's why I'm keeping her to myself here, see? So anyway, you got this guy. He's a non-believer, dear. You're a believer. You believed enough that you went through the schoolmaster. The father saw that you could honor him because of the schoolmaster. You believed and he knew you could honor him. So he gave you to the son. And I'm thinking at the very same time that he gave me because the faith I had before was like the baptisms, you know, of the lesser and the greater. I had faith, I really did, but I mean, I had no desire. <laughs> oh, I know I'm going to be in a place where there's no tears and no sorrow and no joy, but I haven't got the damnedest clue what in the hell that is I, I just don't know because every day I was crying you know <laughs> and then pain and sorrow and suffering and and everything I touched turned the other way but I had a faith <laughs> I know you know and father Abraham he wasn't given all nations when you know he became the friend of our father either he had the promise and and that's all I had I had the promise Y'all get the blessings. <laughs> but now I'm going to start getting these blessings too. I have a feeling. I mean, I got the most beautiful, beautiful gift from our king. And that signifies that he loves me. And because he loves me, dear, you know that if I speak something in my brother's name, do you think he's not going to hear me? I'm serious. And when you are in agreement with it, the power behind that, you defeated the devil just the other day. The devil had me down, boy. I'm telling you, I was quitting. It's like, the hell with this, man. You know, faith, the hell with it. I, I got no faith no more. You want to take my bride? Okay. And there you go. You got it all, man. You took it. You took it. I got no use for anything. Nothing. Nothing. Nobody. Nothing. Yeah, this time you kicked me in the nuts one time too many. That's it. And I was going to go off sinning, boy. And you're up there and you're kicking Satan's ass for me through your prayers at the same time that I thought you was dead. And it's like... Ooh, this distracted him badly and, and just enough time for me to figure out that I was going to go just starve myself to death because I couldn't figure out what sin to do same thing as you you can't lose your faith you can't do it 
try it. Okay, try it. Try it for a second. Just say, well, I don't have faith anymore. <laughs> Sorry, even me saying it, you know, made me laugh because I, I think I'm full of shit when I said that. And I'm not saying you are, dear. No, that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm saying you can sin just as easily right now. And I know you could sin just as easily right now as you could shuck off your faith. <laughs> and you can't do it. You can't. But I know it's built because I've, I've prayed for you or you know our king a little better now, see? And you can see that, you know, uh, words from a man who keeps the laws and commandments of our father, though his name was Elisha or anything else. Elisha never touched the man. I don't have to either. <laughs> You know, the disciples, when they came down in the day of Pentecost, are out there in the yard, and they're speaking. And they didn't touch people. They didn't have to. The Holy Spirit was falling down on them, see? And, and they was, you know, doing some great stuff. Then they got baptized. This was even uncircumcised men out there in the crowd. So, you know, I think what we probably do is we try to put... Our, well, we used to try to put our father in a box. And we try to look at what he says at the ways of the way that we are. <laughs> you know, and it, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's that Westerner's view, you know, versus the Easterner's view. In the East, they've got these covenant, uh, threshold covenant, salt covenant things of this sort that are still valid today you know if you eat some salt you know with a man then you can never kill him it's basically like becoming a blood brother and things of this sort so you know these covenants you're about to enter one and and it's all right you're already in it okay because you are wed to me we're one you're already covered you're reproaches have been removed uh, so you don't have those sins you know it's it's more or less the, the toxins in your holy temple love that's what we're going to focus on and we're going to do it gentle uh, and I want everybody to know out there everybody should be doing this uh, if you're a man and you have a problem with your woman not showing you any attention at all then you can ever get some sauerkraut man and and do some of the same things, okay? But I'm not going to pronounce the command on anybody else when I when I do this command. This is for my bride only. You cannot benefit from this. Holy Spirit will not benefit you from it. And, uh, I mean, if put it this way, you know, if you're not going to keep the laws and the commandments and say you had real problems with your hips, when you walk or something okay and maybe there's a little bit of you know bone you know and they're floating around that really every now and then puts in a little drag into your skip and I was to command that your pain my bride's pain go away and you took it on yourself to take that blessing well you might just take that blessing and be healed and run right out there to the whorehouse because now you got your hips back the same thing that put them out in the first place you dumbass so this blessing ain't for you this is for my bride only however if you ever do decide you will keep the laws and commandments my bride's going to be the first one healed and you'll see you know you'll have testimony she's going to have the testimony it, you know, we're not going to reveal her name, but statistics, you know, I mean, medical things of that sort, and we can have them verified, doesn't matter, you know, but the names can be taken out, original copies, you know, and then with the names written out, then there is uh, uh, copies that could be made and verified to show that these things actually take place because you're all going to be amazed. I mean, this woman is amazing. 
I never saw such faith. From the moment I laid my eyes on her, she trusted in our king. Sure did. We had the same king. So, therefore, darling, are you ready? In the name of Yahshua, our high priest, I do command you to lose the pain. Pain, go. Get out. You're no longer welcome here. If you were uh, a spook or whatever hiding in there causing these things, you're commanded to leave. You're no longer to cause my bride pain. And I ask this in the name of Yahshua, and because he said it's not because I ask. <laughs> I have nothing to do with it, love. You just lose the pain. Stop it. For the namesake of our king, it's going to be done. See, he already feeling better. So with that, my love, I'm going to ask everybody to, you know, just be thankful for what you got. Look at what you can have. I mean, you can't have my bride, but you can still have the same kind of relationship. No matter how broken your marriage is, you can stop, man. I mean, mine was not an example to follow. And, you know, I mean, I've ever since I've been bringing it up, you know, to make sure everything's out in the open. Because when I start this ministry, I don't want this petty crap coming up, you know. I want it all aired out now. Yes, indeed, you know, these things took place, whatever. I did live with an unbelieving spouse. That doesn't matter. None of it matters. What matters is what came out of all of that. And that's me, and I don't think anybody can try to put me down and say that I'm a liar or anything else, because I can put your ass right straight in place. It won't take too long for me to do it either, because I've got that power, I've got that authority. But I want to use that. I, you know, even one of the disciples said, though, I've got full authority to command you to do what is right. I'm not going to do it. Instead, I want to beg you, man, please, 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 please. Please just do what's right. In other words, please love the law above all things. My bride will never break the law to hurt me. I trust her that much because she was already given to the king who gave her to me. And there's opposition, and that's why she's got to be hid right now, because... You know, it's it's opposition. There's a lot of attacks going on, and there's some, you know, Satan don't like this. So we could use your prayers, people, you know, but I, you know, uh, you don't need to be praying for my wife's healing. That's not going to help at all. I don't want you all to think that you have anything to do with this. You know, my bride here, she's already, you know, pretty much pain free, if not completely. It's all up to her. I mean, she. I mean, she could jump the gun. She's got that that kind of faith. Uh, you know, I might find out that, you know, her hip, her, where she's hurting is not hurting anymore. You know, she's completely healed. No problem. But, you know, she can do that. I mean, I opened the door. It's her faith, man, you know. I mean, hers it has nothing to do with me except that I prayed to our king that she would be healed. And, you know, that's coming. But if she wants to be healed now, man, <laughs> you know, she's all going to be done. And we'll find out, you know, what takes place. But, you know, she's going to be healed of the pain. And she'll be able to do better. But, I mean, there, there now there may, if she don't get completely healed, you know, there may be a little bit of pain there because... You know, in some of these injuries, and Yahshua is no dummy, man. Some of these kind of injuries and everything, uh, if it's completely pain-free without the healing, then you might overdo something. You might step over bounds and rip something that you've been so easy not to for so long, and then, ah, then you got to get your your cane out because you're. Uh, back is hurting and stuff, you know, or whatever, whatever's hurting, you know, but there's going to be healing, it's told that there's going to be healing coming in his wings, the wings of our king, 
and guys, I'm his ambassador, <laughs> you know. I'm one of the 144,000. I didn't choose it. Uh, our king chose me and kicked my ass 59 years so that he can get me in shape for these type videos to come out now because I've got love of the law and I've got love of my bride. I was given a holy temple to worship at, man, because our king loves me. And you know what? My bride was given a representation of our king. So that after she treats me, how she's supposed to treat me? Well, you know, then when the dead guy comes back, man, she's going to fall into his arms and kiss his feet. I'm cute. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm pretty dang cute. And I love y'all. And, and Pumpkin, I know that you're just beaming right now because the pain's gone. I told it to be gone. It's just nothing different than demons and stuff, you know. It's a... It's you that did this, it, but it's the love that you have for me because you obeyed me, and I thank you for that. And I, like I told you, I'm not going to be commanding you to do anything. And if you stop eating, you know, I'm, I'm going to say something about it, you know, or hurting something, of course, you know, I'm going to tell it to stop hurting, but... That's the only kind of commanding I want. You know, if I want my tea, you know, or my coffee, hey, look, you know, witness right here, I already got it. You know, my daddy, he kind of taught me a cool thing when I was growing up. He said, son, if you want a handout, look at the end of your arm, man. You know, right at the end of your sleeve there, and look it. You've got a handout, and that's why you fellas don't see no donation button. Though I could say, hey, you know, I am worthy of a tithe. But the tithe ain't even, you know, a, a law, and I could be lying, but, you know, I could say a donation. If you want to make a donation, that'd be fine, but I'm not doing that. I don't want your money. Do so you pay me, then you think that you're going to own part of me. No, our king owns me through my bride. That's how it works. And our king loves you all and he wants you to repent and if you don't want to consider it right now, it's fine, you know, who knows, you might have till tomorrow before you find out if you, you're in the obituary or not, who knows. Ask anybody Anyone in the obituary, you go ask them and say, hey, did you plan on being in this paper today? All right? So, I mean, you got all the time in the world, man. You Ask any of them. Just run right on down there, man. Take that thing down the funeral home or, you know, the graveyard, wherever, and, and ask them. Say, hey, Johnny Finnegan. <laughs> Anyway, I love you, my love, and uh, I love all you, man. I'm telling you, I really do. I've I've given my life for you. Our King said that I would do this so that so I could learn the scriptures. This is the only reason, man. So I could learn these words and speak them in a way that you can hear them. That's that's my job. And of course, you know to to baptize some people, to go baptize some people, you know, for crying out loud and to. To hand out some Holy Spirit, there's a number no man can count coming out. And that's still going to be a chore for 144000 I really don't want to do that kind of work. I don't want to get out there in the water where everyone else is, you know, standing and stuff and, and, and sucking all their stuff into my holy temple. I've been trying to keep myself as pure as possible. I'm virgin for my bride and not for anyone else. I don't, I don't go to public swimming pools. Uh, maybe, a, you know, maybe a river or something. I, I might consider that, but no, I just want my bride's DNA on me. That's it. I don't, I don't need any others. And that's why I'm where I'm at, because I've separated. I came out of this world, man. I became ye separate, just like you can do in, uh, I believe it's 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 6 and it'll tell you you know to come out of this world man you know this is your holy temple right here don't pollute it and it says touch not the unclean thing 
this Naim, and he was eating the unclean thing, most likely, and uh, Elijah wasn't. But yet the name, and, you, and you're not. You're not touching the unclean thing, and you're not eating it. To the best you can do, you, you're not doing it. You have no desire for it. Let's put it that way. Circumstances are going to come up there, I mean, crying out loud. you got people out there, you know, that are having sex with animals and stuff, and they just, you know, don't even wash or anything, and they're out there touching stuff, you know, and they got all that fluid on them, if you go, you know, these, and a lot of people think, you know, that it was our king was born in this little manger kind of thing, but in the day, the manger was cleaner than those hotel rooms, or the inn rooms, or whatever rooms, because even today, they've got those little black lights, they go in there, you know, that, that show uh, seminal fluids and such. And it's everywhere. It's on the ceilings. It's on the walls. Everything, you know. Your your cup to drink your stuff with that the maid, you know, don't want to swap out or whatever. I mean, some places are like that. I've heard of it. I've seen it on TV. And there's semen everywhere in it. You know, you think our king was going to be born in a room that was like coated with semen and in those days they didn't even think about stuff like that you know they they take a bite out of you know the hind leg of a goat and share a bite with their dog you know it they didn't invent germs you know i mean they didn't discover germs <laughs> of course they didn't of course they didn't invent it but they didn't discover germs at the time so you know these things weren't even known and then, of course, I had an awful germ phobia, too, but I'm over that. I, I, I was completely broken here, ladies and gentlemen, a week ago. At the same time, I fell in love, and then Satan came and kicked my ass because of my love. The only way Satan could touch me was because of my bride. Yeah, my gift. And boy, did she. Ah, and my bride says... You about done groveling over there? <laughs> Black eyes, tooth missing, and yeah, I'm broke, man, you know, and the uh, sawdust. Uh, you about done groveling over there. <laughs> but she makes sense, man. I mean, how can you argue with that? So I love you, my dear, and we are going to bring another video about the commanding of people to be healed because you still need to hear it and it's not for you dear because I know your faith's already there because your your you know body the inflammation's already gone you know and for the most part anyway I can't see it from where I'm at but you know if you ask me you know and I'm saying this before it takes place Holy Spirit is impregnated into this video. We prayed and asked beforehand, so you know you're, you got it, but I don't know what extent you're going to be healed. It's not up to me, dear. That's totally up to you. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not forbidding you at all to be totally healed. All the bone chips, everything to be gone, you know. If you want that, you know, it was commanded. You know, and it might take till morning. It, but the pain is gone now. It can't stay there. It's got to be gone, you know, because it's got to be washed and be clean. Naaman can jump into Jordan seven times. I ain't ate pork in oh, around 40 years, I guess. Well, there was a couple times we got slipped up. But it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't even known. It was found out afterwards. And talk about sick... Yeah, so I, I haven't eaten in a fast food joint or anything for, oh, I have to say at least 10, 15 years. I won't do it. And neither shall the 144,000. We're going to get away from this. We're going to start eating clean foods and we're going to become healthy people. Are you listening? Anyone listening to me on that? The blessing's there for that. You just couldn't have my bride's healing. But the blessing is on your body healing from eating sauerkraut every day eat, eat you know eat it every day eat your uh, garlic mixture and such let's get us healthy okay and let's not be one of these statistics of the agenda 21 
And till the next video, which I want to bring out more proof and evidence of how just the commandment, just saying to do something and someone doing it will heal them. It's not this hocus pocus stuff you're seeing on TV and stuff. That That's not healing. That's, you know... It's opening them up for a seven time worse condition if actually the demons or whatever did leave or if it was actually a, a real uh, illness, disease, if it left and they went right out and celebrated eating a pork sandwich, you know, this shit's going to come back on them. Seven times worse down the road, I'm telling you. It's, it's nothing to play with. And I, I haven't healed anybody in... Well, somewhere around 30 years, I'd have to say. I refused to. I wasn't going to. And I never... I healed one little girl one time in the house of Yahweh. And I got my butt chewed and said, Didn't you know that you're not an elder? And because you healed, you know, uh, Yahweh could have killed you. And, of course, you know, I believed it. I said, Wow, I didn't know that. Because I was a dumbass preacher. Just quit preaching. <laughs> you know? I just quit preaching lies and went there. And... And it was a jealousy thing, you know. They knew who I was. There's no doubt about that. And most of them still do. And most of them are more convinced of who I am. Bill Hawkins is. <laughs> How you doing, Bill? I hope you've taken up my offer, man, you know. And, uh, you know, got warned. Because it's, it's warning time. I prayed. Did you hear me, Bill? Yeah, I prayed for judgment. And justice, and guess what? Judgment will start at the house of Yahweh. My bride is the house of Yahweh, and judgment started with her first. And me too, you know, I mean, because I am the house of Yahweh. And what is the house of Yahweh? It's the body of Messiah. And that's where my bride and I am. We're in the body of Messiah, and he's coming to town, man. <laughs> coming to a city near you. So everybody, please repent, you know. I mean, but you got time. Check out the obituaries, man. You've got all the time in the world. Keep sinning if you want, you know. But, but you know, if you kind of come to this understanding, any understanding, then just repent, man, and, and start walking in that one understanding. And it'll make you better. It will. It'll make you better. And you'll feel better about yourself. So until we meet again, which will be shortly, and you know, I'm going to try to get, I don't know if I can get some sleep yet, because my bride, I mean, she, well, she's not hurting now, so I can, Amy, my love, uh, da, ba, da. it's like, I love you, girl, you know, and anything, you ask, my queen, anything. Your wish is my command.